This problem involves finding multiple parts. In part A, we want to find the normal force acting on the object. The normal force is a reaction force. It is the surface's reaction to an object's force. The normal force always acts perpendicular to the surface. It is created because of Newton's third law, which states for every action force, there is a reaction force equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. In this problem, the force of 60 Newtons is pushing up against the wall. So the normal force will react against the 60 Newtons by pushing at a right angle to the object. This is the force of the wall on the object. You can see by looking at the free body diagram that the force F does not push against the wall with the full 60 Newtons, that only the X component of the force pushes the object against the wall. The Y component of the force F pushes up on the wall, keeping the object from sliding down. We want to find the components of the force and use them in our free body diagram. We will isolate F and solve for the components. Here is the vector triangle for force F. First our X component. Our X component is negative because it pushes towards the wall. Next our Y component. Our Y component is positive because it pushes the objects upward. We replace our force F with its components in our drawing. Before we start solving our problem for the missing forces, we want to add the final force acting on our object to the drawing. This force is the weight. Weight is the force of gravity acting on a mass. We will always include the object weight in our free body diagrams. The formula for weight is mass times acceleration due to gravity. This formula is derived from Newton's second law. Weight always points downward and is always a negative force. We substitute in our mass and acceleration due to gravity and find our object's weight in Newtons. Our free body diagram is complete and we can start solving the problem. First we will find the normal force n. We will use Newton's second law in the x direction to find the normal force. The sum of the forces in the x direction are equal to the normal force minus the x component of our original force. We can substitute in our values from the free body diagram. Note that the acceleration is zero. This is because the object is not moving in the x direction. However, it will move in the y direction as we will see in part b. And we can solve for our normal force. The normal force is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to our action force fx. Now we will find the acceleration in the y direction. The sum of the forces in the y direction equals the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Our goal is to find the acceleration. In chapter 2 we always used acceleration in the y direction as negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We did this because those objects were always in free fall. Free fall is a state where the only force acting on an object is gravity. Here we have another force besides gravity acting on the object. We have a force of 51.96 newtons slowing the object as it falls. We want to find the net acceleration of the object that is being acted upon by both gravity and the retarding force. Fy is upward and the weight is downward, so we write the sum of the forces as Fy minus W. We rearrange the formula to isolate the acceleration. Substitute in our values and find the acceleration to be negative 4.60 meters per second squared. This is about half the acceleration due to gravity.